What's up people? Steam Engines, complete guide, everything you need to know. This video is going to be long enough, so let's just start. If you already know a bit about Steam and or don't want to sit through the hour-long tutorial this is going to be, here is the real quick version and you can always check in the timeline uh, for more infos if you have any questions. Boilers generate steam. The bigger the boiler, the more steam per cubic meter it can create. Turbines convert that steam into electric energy. The longer the turbine, the more efficient it gets, however too long will uh, ge generate too much friction and you will uh, lose the efficiency. Small turbine, great power density. Big turbines, great efficiency. Medium turbines, kinda shit at both. Turbines great, perfected piston engine better. Piston engines generate engine power, however they can also generate battery power by a flywheel with a shaft generator attached to it. Piston engines use as few shafts as possible and attach as many pistons to, as you can to said shaft. Don't use single expansion. Use multi-expansion engines where you use the steam and feed it back into the pistons. Double expansion, good density, bad efficiency. Quadruple expansion, good efficiency, bad density. Triple expansion, kind of the middle of both. Single expansion or five times expansion, don't do those, they are too much of a compromise in terms of diminishing returns. Try to make your stages as equal in size as possible. However, if you have to make those stages unequal in size, put more pistons into the earlier stages. This is the best shape for a 7x7x power generation engine. Small piston engines are the best because they have the best form factor, that means they are the easiest to build with efficiently. However, large engines can get you absurd amounts of efficiency. Flywheels reduce RPM and thus friction, so uh, definitely add a few of those to make your engine more efficient. However, the longer the shaft, the less uh, effect they have. Propellers directly attached to a shaft aren't worth it in my opinion, use crank motors instead. Always run at max pressure. If you don't run at max pressure, you are underutilizing your engine. Always run at maximum load. If you don't run at maximum load, you are uh, wasting a ton of energy on friction. You can compensate a little bit by adding batteries or another fuel engine or a smaller steam engine for smaller loads. Since an engine is supposed to be run at load, also make sure to test it at load. For this, use ECM jammers to use up engine power or packs to use up battery. Before we start, there are a few things I need to clear up. Namely, power per material burned. In the progress of this video, I will refer to it as efficiency. Basically, you don't want to throw a marauder into the furnace every second just to power a light bulb. The other term is energy per volume which is 33 right here, how, which determines how big the, the engine has to be in order to create a certain amount of power. The game uses two units of uh, power, which you can see in the bottom right here. You have the engine power. This one cannot be stored. It gets produced and consumed at the same time. And then there's battery energy, which can get stored in the batteries, obviously, and can get converted into uh, engine power if the if, if needed by an electric engine. Why and when should you use steam? Steam engines excel at providing power to constant loads, such as a laser system for example. They are better in every way than fuel engines, however they can get very inefficient if run incorrectly and if run at anything but full load. So for varying loads it is much better to use a fuel engine. You can compensate for varying loads by for example, including batteries and an electric engine or a fuel engine. What I mean with loads is anything that consumes engine power like uh, shields, railguns, particle accelerators, uh, your propulsion systems, uh, lasers, etc. So steam engines are supposed to be run at full loads, so we need to test them at full loads. To do that we use uh, sensor scrabblers, these guys here. You can find them in the defense tab and they are great because you can just uh, set their power use and uh, you just spam down a few of them, set their power use to maximum uh, in order to use up all of the engine power you might produce. You also need to empty your batteries and so on to, in order to do, to do that I have uh, spammed down a ton of particle accelerator cannons right here and an ACB block that makes them fire constantly. They use up all of the battery energy I'm generating and are also the reason why I turn off the sound. Also don't forget to press F5 to give yourself infinite resources. Okay, now that we got all of the, the theory out of the way, let's start with the basics. 
you, what you will need is a boiler. The boiler generates steam. 1000 steam for each one material, period. The size difference is only a difference in how much material it can burn. It doesn't give an advantage in efficiency. That steam then goes into pipes and those pipes can lead either through to a steam jet, turbines, turbines directly convert uh, the steam into electricity for your batteries. Pistons will take that steam and convert that into rotational energy and then you have either a gearbox which converts it into engine power or a flywheel with uh, an attached generator which converts that into battery energy. And lastly you can also have a transmission to then uh, turn a propeller, however you can also turn a propeller with a crank motor. One thing you have to understand about pistons is how much steam they use is directly dependent on the pressure. So we have here an input pressure of 10, which means that uh, this piston, uh, these two pistons can, uh, can make uh, almost 3000, can use almost 3000 steam. These two pistons have an input pressure of four because they are staged, they are using the recycled steam that comes out of those guys and can only use 1780 steam. So the higher more pre the pressure, the more energy you will generate. In general, you always want the boiler to run uh, at maximum pressure, at which point the boiler will automatically regulate itself down. Like right here, you can see we are running at only 10.9 materials per second out of uh, the maximum of 37. So in general, you want your boilers to be able to uh, burn more materials than necessary, but only a little bit to get a perfect balance. Let's start with the first component, boilers. There's three sizes of boilers, like there's also three sizes for everything else, small, medium and large. It doesn't really matter which one you use, uh, because uh, they all convert one material into 1000 steam, so uh, they don't change the efficiency. Also, uh, it all goes through the same pipes. So you can use a large boiler with a tiny turbine or a tiny boiler with a large turbine, whatever you fancy. The only thing uh, that's different between each of them is uh, how much material they can burn and how much energy they can generate. Also, those two guys all need a, uh, an external controller, that's an extra block, with the big ones your controller and your boiler are in the same block, so you don't need this extra block out in the front. So in summary, large boilers are more dense in volume than medium or small ones. Next up, turbines. Turbines convert steam into battery power. You can see here I have a small boiler, just one segment, that is directly attached into different lengths of turbines, and those turbines are attached to small turbine generators. You don't need a pipe between the two, they can just uh, be fed directly. Each turbine consumes a fixed amount of steam, no matter the length. That means uh, you can see here in the third bar, the max steam processed every second is 500. And that 500 is true for every small uh, turbine. So even the, this guy also 500, this guy also 500. For uh, medium turbines, this value is 5000 and for large turbine this value is 30000. The only thing that changes with the length of the turbine is, is the efficiency of the conversion. So uh, this compact turbine has an efficiency, you can see it right at the bottom here, has a conversion of 53%, so it's very inefficient. This guy right here has a conversion of 90%. And this uh, super long guy here has a conversion of 99%. So you can see here, this guy, uh, the small one has 250 battery energy per second. The medium guy has 355 battery energy per second. Because they both eat the same amount of steam, but just uh, from uh, being more efficient, this guy generates more power than this guy. So the ultra long one should generate even more power, right? Well, wrong. This guy produces 300 power. However, the medium guy produces 350. How is that? Well, all moving parts, like turbines, but also pistons, etc., have friction. So they lose energy by moving. This ultra-long turbine gets uh, increasingly diminishing returns on its efficiency, but every block adds friction. 
So there comes a point where the bonus efficiency is less than the friction added by adding another turbine block, which is why this small five block turbine is the most efficient uh, turbine you can have. Friction scaling is not linear, by the way. As you can see here, if we compare these two turbines, the one on the left has a pressure of nine, the one on the right has a pressure of 4.5. So the one on the right consumes exactly half of the material of the one on the left. However, the one on the left has 300 energy and the one on the right has only 120, much less than half. Why is that? Well, if you look at the friction, the one on the left has a friction loss of 75, the one on the right has a friction loss of 67. So the one on the right, despite burning half of the material, doesn't really get an advantage in terms of friction. Because friction doesn't move linear, like uh, the friction does get higher with higher RPM. However, you get like a base level of friction that is just constantly there. So whatever engine you're using, be it turbines or be it piston engines, try to always run them at maximum. Because while you will have the most friction loss, the power output scales stronger than the friction loss. So in the end, you will have a higher efficiency. Turbines can be attached to both sides of a small turbine generator. Uh, and also, like I said, boilers don't need pipes. They can connect directly to the turbine. So this tiny little setup is a very easy way to generate uh, 500 power. Unfortunately, the inf interface here is a little bit wrong. You have 100 energy per volume. However, it only recognizes one of the boilers. So really the efficiency right here is 500. Turbine engines also come in medium and large variants. The medium ones uh, get a massive boost in efficiency over the small ones, the small ones being very dense, the medium ones being very efficient, and the large ones, because they get this absurd amount of steam conversion rate, uh, keep the efficiency but regain back a lot of the density, making them really the, the best option for large scale uh, battery generation through turbines. Turbines are great, they are a valid option, they are much less complex than piston engines, they are very efficient and while still being okay in density. Of course, my piston engine that I'm having here is better in both efficiency and density than this huge turbine, but not by much. So if this video has been complicated enough, you can uh, go out there and build turbine engines, that's completely fine. But if you want to get the best that Steam can offer, you need piston engines and you need to uh, keep watching this video. There are a few steps in building a good engine and a few things you need to know. First thing is that you need to minimize the amount of uh, gearboxes and crankshafts. For one, obviously, because you will just have fewer blocks in your system and for, uh, also because you will have few blocks that create friction because friction loss are the reason why steam engines get inefficient. You also want to maximize the amount of pistons you, you fit onto each crank because once again fewer blocks that create friction. Those numbers of 250 pale in comparison to the turbines which have numbers of six or seven hundred. Well we can make our engines more efficient because, as you can see here, those pistons have big arrows, one pointing in, one pointing out. The arrow pointing in shows where the steam uh, boiler has to connect to, where it feeds the engine in, and this is the outlet where the waste steam goes away. However, we can use said waste steam, like right here, we, we pick it back up, turn it around and feed it back into a, a second pair of pistons. This is called staging or multi-expansion and dramatically increases the efficiency. Like this guy has an efficiency of 430, while this guy has an efficiency of 270. You can do this multiple times, like we can use the output of those pistons once again to feed into more pistons and again. So we have uh, staging, we have a single stage, two stage, three stage and four stage piston engine. In general, uh, the fewer stages you have, the more dense or the smaller your engine will get, while an engine with more stages will be much more efficient, but will also be bigger. I personally consider uh, two or three stage engines to be the best, 
because of diminishing returns, the single or the four stage engines uh, just lose out too much in terms of efficiency or density with only very little gain in what they're optimizing for. There's two ways of uh, designing the stage transition. You can either have all of your pistons in a row, uh, take the steam from the from the first uh, pistons, then uh, move it over one block, and move it down and then feed it into the next pistons. Or you can do it with a design like this, where you take it, uh, but you don't turn it to the right, but you feed it straight and only then you uh, move it down to the right and into the next engines. This means, however, that there is always a gap between, uh, between each stage. However, this block here uh, is now freed and uh, that means you, that you can uh, add a second set of pistons that uh, you, uh, uses the exact uh, same uh, piping system than the bottom pistons, which allows you to uh, integrate multiple uh, engines together, as you can see in this uh, piston engine right here. You can see that we use this te technique to, uh, combine, uh, to combine pipes, and you can also see uh, the separation between each stage right here where there are no pistons. For the ratio, a design like this is pretty bad because it has uh, only two pistons in the first stage and four pistons in the second stage. You don't want that. You want either each stage to have the same amount of pistons, or if you have to change the amount of pistons, because like for example, you are limited in length, put more pistons into the earlier stages. Like for example, uh, this guy here has uh, six pistons in the first stage, five pistons in the second stage, and four pistons in the third stage. There is a slight gain to be found in a system like this, where you have more pistons in the earlier stages. However, this is battling for the last one or two percent. So really just go with equal amounts and just uh, just when, when you have a, an odd length, only then switch over. Let's talk about size. What you've seen here until now were all small engines, which is what I have right here. However, there are also medium engines, which look like this with uh, just uh, bigger pistons and also large engines, which are these massive things right here. In general, like with the turbines, small engines will have higher density, lower efficiency, and large engines will have higher efficiency, but lower density. With medium engines kind of being the bastard child of both of them, they are the most awkward to build with, they don't have any coherent form factor, and they don't give any significant improvement compared to either of those. Like what you have here, is a uh, small piston engine. It is just uh, perfect. Uh, it has the perfect layout. Uh, all of the boilers are internal. All of the uh, pistons match up, etc., etc. And then you just have these guys, which are medium piston engines, where you just have like the, the flywheel stick out. You have the the crankshaft uh, has to stick out uh, by one block to the side. Uh, you can't really use all of the internals because you just have so much internal space and uh, don't need all of that many boilers because the pistons cannot uh, use that much engines. I'm just not a huge fan, really, of, uh, of medium piston engines. They aren't that good. Like in theory, medium engines should be more efficient than small engines, but simply because small engines are so much easier to optimize and easier to build with, my small engines are still more efficient than medium ones and more power dense. Like the only th only way I would really see a medium engine being good is by uh, using the exact same uh, cross section as I use for the small engines, but scaled up. This would work. However, uh, the small engine is in in entirely enough to uh, power my extremely power hungry one million railgun laser craft. So I really don't want to know what craft you want to build that would justify using this monster of an engine. I'm going to talk about huge engines real quick. So they are fairly easy to build. Um, there are two types of pistons. You have the ones that uh, I use right here, which are the serial piston. And that means that they automatically uh, generate staging. That means that the steam, you feed the steam in through the first piston, and this now creates the first stage, it then vents out into the second one, which then creates the second stage, which then goes to the third stage, fourth stage, and fifth stage. And right here, out of the back, that is where all of the excess steam is vented. So what we have right here is a five-stage steam engine. 
once again, huge engines are very comfortable to build with. Uh, they are extremely efficient, though unfortunately they are not very dense, but also they are very pretty to look at. Over here we have a second huge steam engine, which takes the other pistons, which are the parallel pistons. You can see here that they have two pipes, one big one, one small one. And that is because uh, the, the small pipe, you can also see here in, in the arrows, is input and the large one is output. And so you can uh, chain those together just like those. However, everything that's here on the left side is all input and everything that's here on the right side is all output. If you chain multiple of those together, those all create one stage. If you want to stay, change the stage, you have to connect one pipe from one of those output arrows, move it over and then put it into one of the input arrows. So what you're looking at right here is a two-stage huge steam engine. Like I said, huge steam engines are extremely comfortable to build. However, this guy is worse in every stat compared to my small uh, steam engine, which we'll talk about later. Few things to mention though before we start building. Hybrid piston and uh, turbine engines. Um, I think it was a thing in earlier updates where you could use uh, the used steam and feed it into turbines. However, right now it's just not worth it because turbines create a ton of back pressure into the system, meaning that those pistons cannot run optim optimally. Turbines themselves run best at high pressure. So if you still have gaps in your system and you have enough uh, steam left over, you can build uh, turbines. It's a very good idea. I will try to connect them directly to the boilers instead of uh, connecting them to the output of pistons. That just decreases the efficiency of the whole system. That issue with back pressure also applies to boilers. Uh, so just don't ever add boilers uh, halfway into your steam engine. Because while it might sound like a good idea to just add steam somewhere, um, the back pressure will mean that these pistons will run even worse than without uh, this uh, st steam boiler, and you just ruin com and you just completely ruin the efficiency of your engine. So, so just don't do that. Another block I need to show you are flywheels. Flywheels are awesome. If you look at our stats right here, as soon as we place it our RPM go down, our kinetic energy loss go down, and thus our uh, power generated goes up. What the flywheel does is it reduces the RPM while keeping uh, the gen generated power stable, and itself not really causing much uh, kinetic energy loss. So the reduced RPM will mean that uh, you get less uh, loss from friction, and thus also uh, become a more efficient engine. However, just like with the turbines, if you add too many of them, the diminishing returns will eventually outweigh the benefits. Uh, on such a small engine like this, the difference is very noticeable. However, on a huge engine like, like this, well, the difference is like 10 energy points. This guy now has the same RPM, 63, as this guy. However, uh, it is dramatically less efficient and has dramatically more uh, kinetic energy loss because it just has those uh, pistons that aren't connected to anything. Uh, they, 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 they are just there for the drag. By the way, this is also my biggest complaint about four plus staged en engines. It's just that the pistons at the back will add only minimal amounts of, uh, of power while also adding uh, large amounts of drag until eventually it just uh, becomes worthless. Another use for flywheels are the attachment of small shaft generators, which also dramatically reduce the RPM, however not in a good way because they add a lot of friction. They are used to convert the engine power that this uh, shaft generates into battery electric power. It is a fixed percentage, like as you can see right here, we have uh, 778 gearbox power generated and 840 battery energy generated. However, we can always just add more of them. Uh, to the engine and uh, they will gradually increase uh, the fraction of power that gets put into batteries. However, once again with diminishing returns and with dramatically more uh, friction added with every uh, unit you build. What happens if, say, we don't need any uh, engine power, we only need battery storage? Well in, this case, uh, the sh well, in this case, the shaft will start spinning faster and faster and uh, thus also the uh, generators will produce more and more until eventually either the shaft reaches max RPM or uh, you, you, you produce so much battery power that you reach equilibrium once again. 
once you have your engine set up and everything is uh, as it should be, I recommend that you go uh, here into the maximum RPM and uh, change this number to your current RPM. So we're currently looking at 130 out of 180, which is 72%. So we just limit uh, the maximum RPM to exactly that value. And this means that if um, we ever run below load, the RPM won't skyrocket. Instead, uh, the boilers will regulate themselves down to consume less power, which means that you can uh, easier ma maintain your efficiency even, if at, even at lower loads. Because if you didn't have that maximum RPM limit, then uh, your RPM would just shoot off uh, to the maximum, in this case 180, uh, meaning that the boilers will uh, have to uh, burn more and burn harder in order to uh, just uh, keep the engine running uh, with the friction. As for steam propellers, there's two ways of doing it. You can either have a piston set up uh, going through a transmission into the propeller, or you can use crank motors. Well, crank motors are slightly less powerful, but they are just so much more convenient to place that I just prefer them. If you still want to use a steam setup, make sure to uh, limit the power uh, output right here. If you remove that, your engine will uh, feed all of its power straight into the propeller and will not try to share between the propeller and any uh, and the general engine power of your ship. The transmission has a gear ratio, by default it's set to 1, but you can put it up to 2, uh, which basically just straight up uh, doubles the output of your propeller, however crankshafts have this uh, as well. Like once again, by default it sets to 1 and literally there is no nothing stopping you from just setting it to 2 and just getting so much more out of your uh, propeller. And if I disconnect here, you can see that uh, this propeller is still running at um, maximum RPM. This guy is losing a tiny bit, uh, he's lost uh, about 20% power. Just uh, for the sake of convenience, personally, I, I prefer uh, crank motors, but that's up to you, your choice. Also do note that the motor power used for a crank motor is actually fixed, it's independent of the maximum RPM factor, which means that a crank motor usually is a slightly more powerful than necessary to power its small propeller, but will be uh, underpowered to power uh, the large propeller, so it's usually better to just uh, go one crank motor bigger for, uh, for example, from the 3 meter propeller, take the 3 meter propeller from the medium crank motor because even though it has less thrust than the smaller propeller, the crank motor will be able to actually provide that thrust, whereas the small crank motor will fail here. Also, I've been told that the devs are looking into changing this maximum RPM factor thing. I don't know what they will change it into. Will it be set to 2 by default? Will it not be able to climb uh, that high at all? Uh, I don't know how they will change it, but I will keep you up to date. Okay. Time to build an engine, I guess. Finally! <laughs> the engine I'm about to build is purely for power generation, not for propellers. I'll talk about those later. We will uh, build uh, this guy here, which is my standard 7x7xx, whatever length you wanted uh, engine, which uses this cross section right here. But I'll uh, show you what it's made of. You start with a gearbox and a crank. crank. Obviously, you want to attach as many pistons as possible to this gearbox, so we'll uh, put uh, two on the side and one in the center as well. Those pistons need steam, so we'll put piping around here, and while if the piping is here already, we can just add another set of pistons facing upwards. Those pistons naturally need their own crank and gearbox. These cranks ideally uh, are also fed by a set of three pistons per crank, so uh, we'll just add those pistons right now. And finally we can add a layer of pistons on top with another crankshaft and gearbox on top. Now those uh, pistons right here in the center all pull their input steam from this center block right here. However, they each have individual outputs, but by uh, building it like this, we can, uh, we can gather their output steam in just two locations, instead of uh, each piston having its own, uh, its own output location, which saves us two block in the hole. The pistons right here in the corner also need their own output pipes, obviously. 
and this is our basic setup. Now you have a few free spaces right here, which we can use to add boilers, but we'll do that later. Now we want the output here to flow further down the engine. So uh, instead of using a four-way pipe here, we uh, will use a three-way pipe. You will turn on and off mirror mode a lot because uh, you will want to build the outer uh, sides with mirror mode, but the central ones not because uh, like uh, it has this uh, diagonal uh, placement of those uh, pipes. How do we build a stage? Well, first of all, we have to uh, cap off the input pipes like so. Then we want to take the output pipes and relocate them so they uh, move to the same position as the old input pipes. Okay, cool. Now we'll add flywheels because uh, I have already explained the benefit of flywheels. Uh, where the, uh, the crankshaft is because in this position obviously there cannot be a pistons because we are uh, switching stages. Also there are places free uh, around those flywheels to attach any amount of shaft generators depending on the ratio of engine power and battery power that you, you, you will uh, need on the final ship. And that's pretty much everything we need. Right now we can already uh, switch over to the, to the prefab tool and just pick up a slice from the middle bit and start putting those down. And then we can uh, take a prefab from, from the stage switcher and throw it in there as well. Just make sure that uh, you take the block right before the stage switching as well, because uh, obviously you need to cap off the input pipes. Uh, and so you, you need to uh, take that cap with you. And based on another handful of uh, central modules, and an end module as well. And there we go. There we have it. Now everything that's left is to uh, put the boilers in the middle and also remove the last uh, block on the output pipe so that the steam can vent freely. Because if there was a block right here, that would mean that this steam cannot leave uh, which would create a backlog of pressure and the engine wouldn't run. However, if you move, remove this block, all of the, the, the steam can vent into this one free block. It just needs one block to, uh, to vent into it. Uh, doesn't check if there's any more. So you can have a wall right here uh, cutting everything off and the steam engine can work just fine. Now, there are still holes in this engine. However, those are straight holes that go all the way through, which are perfect to place some uh, boilers in there. So let's do that as well. Okay, so now we have a bunch of boilers here and a bunch of input pipes asking for steam. So all we have to do now is to connect everything up with pipes. And so with all our pipes connected, we can already see that the engine starts moving. If you hover over the pipes, you can see the pressure in there uh, slowly building up. And also like uh, you can see that on the second and third stages, uh, the pressure drops. Do yourself the favor and check uh, if there, uh, and check all of the pipes and all of the pistons uh, if they have uh, the correct pressure, um, just just to see if there are any leaks or something happening. If you check this pipe, you can see that we are only running at 8.2 uh, pressure out of 10. That means we're uh, not running at full potential. That means we're giving away a uh, potential. So we need to add more boilers in order to get up to those that magic 10 pressure. And there we go. We just reached maximum pressure. Uh, the boilers automatically regulated themselves down to burn slightly less materials per second than the uh, maximum. So if we now press Q, uh, you can uh, press Q on any of the blocks. I just like to press Q on the pipes because like the steam boiler will give you the boiler information. You have to switch tabs to get to the information while on the pipes you get to the information directly. This engine has a uh, power per volume of 94 and a power per material burn of 573 meaning this is a fairly uh, which means that, that this is a fairly dense engine with okay efficiency the great advantage of these types of engines is that you can just uh, take prefabs of any slice and you can just mix and match them as much as you want like right here out of this engine i built like this is a two-stage version this is a three-stage version and this is the four-stage version 
there still is a ton of to talk about as you can see by the size of this platform and the amount of engines that are strewn across it I will make a second video as soon as I understood everything that there is to understand and also as soon as the devs fix some bug that are still involved in steam engines however it shouldn't affect anything that I talked about in this video a special thanks to Eudaimonia I think that's how you pronounce it who uh, taught me a lot about steam engines and fact checked the whole video but I guess it's a mutually beneficial relationship really since this video will hopefully at least save him a bunch of time explaining to people over and over how steam works this video was a ton of effort to make um, I don't know how long it took uh, me to learn steam uh, but that doesn't matter because I did that for myself but just to put it into perspective, making this video from the point that I actually understood Steam to uh, producing this video it was roughly 15, maybe even 20 hours of actual work that I had to put in, like building this demonstration based, double and triple checking a ton of uh, different factors and uh, then doing all of the recording. I had about two hours of footage that I somehow had to compress down into a watchable length because I am no border wise and I don't want, just want to upload like hours and hours of uncut content. No offense border wise, I love your stuff, but like <laughs> it sometimes really is a chore to watch through and not everybody has the time. So I had to edit all of that stuff down and uh, I had to do a couple of, uh, of reshoots re and re-recordings and oh my god, it was just, yeah. <laughs> So anyways, I would much appreciate it if you could just uh, leave a like on the video and if anyone asks about Steam Engines, just uh, share them this tutorial and also tell them to uh, check out the rest of this YouTube channel because I, in my opinion, I upload some pretty cool content around here and any bit of attention and support would be much appreciated. Thank you so much uh, and see you in the next one.